Hi, I'm Rick Dior, and today we're going to talk about one of my favorite subjects, orchestral snare drums. Uh, I have many uh, orchestra drums, and today I'm going to show you probably about half of what I own. We're also going to um, compare heads, the difference between calf and different kinds of plastic or mylar heads, and different size drums, and as well as uh, shell construction. I have uh, metal here, I have copper, I have brass, and I have several wood drums of varying thickness. So let's get started. Um, it took me a while to put together this test because I wanted to get a couple sets of identical snare drums tuned pretty much the same, but with calf and plastic on there so you could hear the difference. So right here what I have set up first are these two pearl philharmonic drums. They're, they're the basic pearl philharmonic snare drum they have um, the snare system is uh, actually usually I take these curly snares off but I put them back on because that's what the drums come with so that's probably what most of you have but in the orchestra they tend to buzz a little the horns set them off in the timpani pretty good so I'll replace those with some cable or a different kind of uh, gut or something okay but we have curly snares we have cable and we have a coated wire okay and that's identical for both drums and that's going to be uh, pretty much all the pearl drums I use today will have them now I really like the pearl snare drums uh, I am not an endorser of any snare drum company except for Doc Sweeney but that's drum set stuff so because uh, I have so many different kinds of snare drums but I love the pearl strainer I think it's super quiet super smooth very adjustable uh, all their drums sound good and they sound different as you'll hear today um, so I have a big collection of those and we use them in the orchestra all the time okay so uh, the sticks I'm going to be using are uh, I'll use several sticks to show you the different sounds but uh, these reamer sticks I'll be using uh, the old William reamer sticks a couple pairs of those I also have some of my own sticks that I make uh, that I'm sure you've seen in some of the uh, other videos and they're ranging weight from 72 to 85 grams pretty heavy so I'll use these when we have big uh, big snare parts in the orchestra everything else I'm mostly using the reamer stick and the old version of, of made of persimmon so the first thing I want to talk about is heads so I took some heads out I have a large collection of calf heads that I've acquired over the years I love calf heads if you've seen any of my other videos I'm always talking about it um, I'm just, I love the feel, I love the sound. The only bad thing about them is they're affected by the weather. And where I live in North Carolina, it gets pretty humid. Uh, so you got to keep your eye on them. Uh, they'll go up and down pretty quick. The plastic head I use the most, though, on snare drums is a Remo Diplomat. Again, no endorsement here. Uh, I just always have used these. And this is the Renaissance version. They're called Hazy. And this is what I use if I'm not using calf. I'll use this on the top, the batter head. And on the bottom, I always use a clear snare diplomat, which is so thin, it's like cellophane. So that's what I use regularly. Then we have a couple um, calf heads here I wanted to show you. So this is a bottom calf head. It says glaze on it. I got it from someone. I guess maybe that was their name or something. But um, you see how thin it is. So it's like a, it's like a snare diplomat head. Um, and you, see, you can see where the snares have been. And normally I will not use a snare bottom head. I only have one drum today I'm going to show you that has both top and bottom snare uh, uh, head, um, snare heads that are calf skin. Okay? It has to be very thin to be a bottom head, so it's super sensitive. So these are rare. These are hard to find, the super thin ones. Uh, you'll also notice this wooden rim. I don't like those because they warp and they pull out. So you'll see that's kind of rough. And I, I know how to tuck these myself. I've done them over the years. What I do prefer, though, are these. These are Lafima heads. Okay, they make percussion instruments. They're, they're in Europe. And um, they stamp their heads into a metal ring, which is ideal. It's fantastic. I've never had one of these heads pull loose. And they're perfectly round and perfectly straight. So they just always sound great. And I've amassed a large collection of these over the years. They are expensive, unfortunately. But you can see where this one's been beaten pretty good. <laughs> this is one of my drum set heads that I use for brushes. 
um, and, and sticks, obviously. And it's a pretty thick, okay? And, and calf heads will break easier than plastic heads, a lot easier. So you just got to be careful, all right, with them. But anyway, that's my favorite kind of calf head. You can get these. You have to order them, um, but you can get them. And I would, I would get them now if you can, if you can afford it, because who knows, you know, this kind of thing might disappear. And I don't know of anyone who else who's stamping their heads in the metal rings, their calf heads. It's really great. Okay, and then here I just have a regular, um, a regular calf head with another wooden ring. This one uh, I did recently. You see how it's kind of perfect now. That won't last for long. Once I put it on uh, and tighten it up, it'll probably get a little, a little weird. But even you see when you wet them and then dry them, they remain a little bit uh, wrinkled, unlike plastic heads, which basically look perfect from the box. Okay. So they're always pretty rough looking until you tighten them up. Again, wood, not, not my preference, but most of, most of the calf heads you'll find will have a wood rim. Okay, so we'll put these away. So uh, on this drum to my left or your right, uh, I have a diplomat, a Remo diplomat. And this drum is a Lafima uh, coated head. And you'll be able to see that. Maybe I'll do a close up with this other camera. All right. The sticks I'm going to use for a minute are these uh, Reamer uh, light sticks. They're the Reamer concert sticks. They're pretty lightest thing I have here. And no muffling at first. I'll just let you hear the, the drums. Now, there are sympathetic vibrations since I try to tune them close. And the, the pitch I prefer is around an A. You know, every, anywhere from a G to an A is where I'll tune my classical drums. And the size I prefer, uh, as you'll see, a lot of these drums are the same, is a 5.5 by 14. That's my favorite size for an orchestral drum. I have deeper drums. I have uh, piccolo drums, but this is my preferred size. All right? So here's the tom sound from the calf head of the Pearl Philharmonic. And here's the tom sound from the plastic head from this Pearl Philharmonic. Now what I hear right here, hopefully the microphones will pick this up, the calf head is much more pure of tone. They're tuned roughly the same. Very close. This one might be a little lower. And by the way, calf skin will move on the dime. In other words, I just tuned these up and I checked them with a tuner and everything. And right away, this one got a little lower because it's, it's raining outside today. So that's one of the things. So, you know, I'll keep pulling it up, but it's going to get lower as we go on. That's just, that's just what calf heads do. You got to babysit them. All right. But what I hear is a pure tone. And again, this is no muffling at all. Normally, I use a little bit of muffling. For this one, I hear some overtones. And they're not pure. They're kind of ringy, okay? Not, not a great sound. If I was going to do like Bartok and Trudeau for orchestra, okay? So that kind of stuff, you'd want to play on a drum that sounds pure. Now, if when we use muffling, actually let's talk about muffling for a minute. I have a number of different kinds of mufflers here. Sometimes I just use a piece of felt. So we'll put that on there, all right? And right away, it sounds much, obviously, much drier. Never ever use moon gel on a calf head. Okay, I know everybody uses moon gel, but that will stain it right away, it gets really oily. It's pretty gross, all right? And I just don't like it in general because it just stains everything. So in a pinch, you can use it, but it bleeds all over, all right? So a, a piece of felt works great. Only problem, it might move around on you. So what I do use quite often are these little pieces of leather or cloth. A friend of mine, Arnold Sykes, makes these, and um, he was uh, great enough to send some to me so I can show you. If you're interested in them, you can contact me and I'll put you in touch with him. I think he sells them. So 
what I do is I just take a regular binder clip. I got some nice brass ones here and I clip it to the rim. And that way you can take it on and off. It doesn't do any kind of cosmetic damage to the drum and it's basically free. All right. It's just a piece of leather, a piece of, you know, this stuff they use to clean cars. I think it's called chamois or something. Um, so leather, some sort of heavier leather, heavier than felt. Okay, and uh, right away, it's even drier than the felt. And again, if you want to use a little more muffling, you could just add a little more, add a felt. Normally, I don't like to muffle too much because out in the hall, you don't hear as much ringing as you hear up close. So don't over muffle. Now, also, they, uh, these kinds of mufflers are available. I'm not sure what this is. This might be a freer muffler or something, but uh, these are fine, too. They're, again, it's a cloth thing. You tie it to a lug and put it on there. I use these. But basically, I've been using these, um, these cloth ones for quite a while. I'm really happy with them. And I have several uh, sizes he sent me, uh, so we'll use several sizes today. Okay, so now let's compare these muffled. And what I'll do is I have two of the exact same size. Uh, and I'll put those on so we could hear that quickly. So here's the Tom Muffled. Now they sound closer because we got rid of the overring. And this went down. I'm not going to tune it and waste time, but it did go down a little. Now, let's put the snares on. Okay. So again, we're going to have to muffle one at a time because they're so close in pitch that they're giving me some sympathetic vibrations. So here's with the snares, calf head. Okay, and this is the plastic head with snares on. All right, now the snare settings are set exactly the same, or as close as I could get them. So. Um, I know some of you might say that sounds different. Well, it sounds different because of the head. It's a huge difference. So here we go. All right. And again, isn't this interesting? This sounds a little higher, even though it's lower because of the calf. That sounds a little meatier. All right. So uh, whatever you prefer, they're both sound really good. Uh, I prefer the calf personally. It, to me, it plays better. It it rolls better for soft rolls nothing beats it so and these are tuned pretty tight right now okay to get them close so normally I would tune this drum with the calf head a little bit lower so that's um, this size pearl uh, drum now just so you know the um, the shell on this drum is a typical shell. It's about three eighths. I don't know how many plies, maybe four or five plies. Actually, I think on these it's a three ply, but um, maple, you know, just a standard drum. It's pretty, it's all blinged out here, but, but it's just a basic pearl wood shell. Okay, so we're going to retire these for a minute. And let me put them here so they won't cause damage. Just bear with me. All right, so next up, we have a very thick-shelled wood drum. So this is another pearl drum. Oh, it's heavy. Okay, now I think this is like a 22-ply drum or some ridiculous thing like that. It's super thick. It's like an inch thick, all right? This reminds me of some old sonar drums that I have, rosewood ones from the, from the 70s. They're very dry, but they got, they're loud. All right, so this has, again, a plastic head. And I just want to show you uh, what the difference is in, in shell thickness. And um, same size, five and a half by 14. Okay, 
So we'll put this on there. Now, while we're setting up, I just wanted to say, I usually prefer to play over the snares. So that means the strainer is facing me. Okay? So, there we go. So I can turn it on and off really quickly. And um, usually get the best snare response over the snares. Now, for my drum set snares, I have it a little off where the strainer is kind of to my left. Okay? Because I think I feel like for the, my drum set snares, the, um, the snare sounds better there. All right? That's just my own preference. So we'll do the same thing. I've tuned these up. I'm, I'm sure the calf moved, though. So Again, it's gotten lower. We'll bring it up just a little. I won't waste too much time here. And I, there's no need to do star tuning for this. Just when you put the heads on, you definitely should do it. So they're, all the lugs are even. You can use, you know, the tune bot or any kind of um, drum dial. That's all good if you want. It doesn't work as well on snare drums as it does on timpani and bigger drums. That's closer, okay? So, um, again, an A is a good pitch to start with. So, if you listen to this tom unmuffled. And here's the um, tom sound on the other snare drum. Same thing, I'm hearing. So this is a much more pure tone. You really hear the pitch. And again, they're tuned so close that you're getting sympathetic vibrations off that. Kind of sounds better with it. All right? So uh, to me, it's pure. Now, because of the thick shell, it's much more uh, attack. It has much more attack, both drums. And that's what you get with that thick shell, which is nice. So if you're playing like Shostakovich or something, it'll... All right, so it's beautiful. I know it's ringing a lot. There's no muffling on it. And this drum, same thing. So generally, plastic heads are going to sound... Um, a little more ringy, and the ring is not going to be as pure, and they're going to sound higher pitched, okay, in general. That's uh, when you're using plastic heads on the same exact drum, okay? Now, we'll put some muffling on there quickly so you can hear what that sounds like, and we'll just go and use these muffles again. Should have taken them off. Okay, sure in the same place. All right, so this is this drum muffled on snare. Well, let's do it on Tom first. And this drum muffled. I'll just leave that, so. Sounds good. You got rid of once you muffle the plastic, you get rid of those crazy ring sounds. Whereas in calf, it's more forgiving. The ring is my opinion. All right, that's why they're so great for timpani heads because they're pure sounding. They're very you know people use the term warm if you want to use that, um, but it's true. And and the guy I studied timpani with Fred Hinger always uh, when he was playing with the Met, he had calf on several of his drums, and I got to take lessons at his house. So I played on those, and man, wow. That's what, that and seeing Mel Lewis play convinced me to use calf basically for the rest of my life whenever I could. Okay, now on snare drum, muffle this time.
So it naturally rings a little more, okay? Even though it's muffled, just like the other one. Okay, so that is a thick, thicker shell drum, which is giving us more attack. Again, same exact drum, different heads. Let's take these off. Now, let's show you some different constructed shells and give you an idea of what we can do with them. Give me a second to get these off here. All right, so let me show you a really rare drum. Um, this is one of my favorite drums. It weighs a ton, probably 40, 50 pounds. This is a Clevelander. Oh, yeah. Jesus. Okay. Thing's dangerous. It's so heavy. Well, we'll turn it this way. So never drop it, okay? You'll do damage to your foot or <laughs> whatever else it hits, and the drum, obviously. So this is made out of uh, cast shell brass, like bell brass. Um, I have a couple other sonar drums that are like this, made out of, um, I believe they're bronze or, or, or um, I'm not sure, but they're, they're heavy, just like this. And uh, this drum belonged to our former percussionist, Peyton Becton, and I bought it from him. I did have another one I got from Tim Adams, which was a, um, a brass shell drum, um, same thing, brass finish. I sold that to the National Symphony recently. Um, and that sounded really great too. I just don't need two of them. They both pretty much sound identical. And this one's a little bit prettier. So, so this drum, it's number 94. I think they made a hundred of them. And it is super loud. Wow. Okay, I should be wearing earplugs. We'll muffle it a little. Now this has, um, I don't know if you can see it. I don't want to take it off again, but it has a skin tone head on it, a Remo skin tone head, which is kind of their newer fiber skin head. And it's supposed to sound like calf. Uh, it doesn't, but it still sounds good. I love them on my drum, my drum set drums, and they're okay on, on classical drums too. So, But it doesn't sound like calf. That is, a, that is um, not, I guess maybe they sounds more like calf than a regular coated ambassador, but yeah, as you can see, you know, it, it doesn't. So. This drum is incredibly sensitive. It's amazing. So sensitive. So this drum has the widest dynamic range. So if I'm playing a piece with an orchestra or wherever that needs, you know, super pianissimo, like three Ps and, and triple fortissimo in the same piece, and I, I'm not going to change snare drums, this is the drum I use because you can go from a whisper basically just you know knocking you out of your seat so all right so uh, I really love heavy brass shell drums for volume so if you ever need a loud drum this is this kind of thing um, you can get one all right and you can also uh, take an old Tama brass drum and convert it into uh, an orchestra drum by changing the snares and again, this, the snares on this have very similar to what we use. This is normally what I'll use for my pearl drums. So you see on there. Okay, good. Let's put this down. <laughs> All right. So that is a Clevelander. If you ever find one, if you have the money, buy it. They're super rare. Okay, what else we got? Oh, this is a really cool drum. This is a Schegel. I think that's how you say it. Drum from Germany. Okay, it's actually made of a timpani shell, which is going to be copper, and it's called the Berliner Philharmonic. -er. <laughs> okay, and I really, really like this drum. It's not an, every, an everyday drum. You cannot use it for everything. It's a specialty drum. Now, when I say that, it's because it sounds kind of weird, um, but it sounds nice. It's beautiful. I use it. We do a lot of movies with the symphony. Like, that's the new thing with symphony orchestras. They're doing all these movie soundtracks, and we always sell out. So we do all the Harry Potter movies, the Star Wars, all this John Williams stuff. And John Williams writes for tons of percussion. And he always has like three or four or maybe even five different kinds of snare drums in his, um, in his movie scores. So we're, we have like all these snare drums. And this makes a great 
military kind of drum. So I'll let you hear this. It has a calf head. Oh, by the way, it has a calf head on the top and the bottom. This is the drum I was talking about. And I have these like guitar wire. Well, I haven't put them on there, but they're guitar wires. And they're super sensitive. Okay? But it's a, it's a cool drum. Not Again, not for everyday use, but I do use it quite often. And if I wanted a sound like an old rope drum, but I didn't want to deal with the size of the thing, because those are really hard to mount on a stand because they're so big, uh, this is the drum I go for. So... Now that's tuned really high, believe it or not. I know it sounds pretty low, probably. Um, this drum definitely needs to be muffled. This is where I'd use a bigger muffle because it rings, it's copper. And the shell is out, like a, almost like a taiko drum kind of thing. Timpani, basically. <laughs> It's got a nice tom sound too. Okay, good. Uh, uh, by the way, when you're playing like a piece, bar talk, and church orchestra or something, it's always a good idea to bring a bunch of snare drums. By a bunch, you know, three or four. So if the conductor's not happy with the sound, then you could just pop another one up there and make him or her happy. Uh, I've played that piece a number of times. I just played it recently, and um, I brought a bunch of snare drums. I actually ended up using that Clevelander because I just put it up there. It sounded fine. The conductor was fine with it. But it's always good to have a number of drums on hand just in case. Okay? Good. So that's a Shagel. Okay. And now let's talk one more drum before we get to the different sizes. This is a uh, another Pearl Philharmonic. This is a Bubinga shell, um, same snare setup, and I have a Diplomat on here, not a calf. I like this drum. It sounds different um, than all the rest of the Pearl Philharmonics, a lot different. Th it's got to be the shell, because that's the only thing different, all right? So you see, <laughs> Bubinga is hard, and it's going to be dry, so it's a, it's a different sound, and I've used it quite often, actually. It's a lot of fun to play this, this drum. So it is really has the most attack of any drum that I own, classical snare drum, or any drum. And I think it's because the shell, that wood is so hard. You know, marcato right in the middle. It's just like a gunshot. Not great for everything, but you need some impact and you need to sound like two or three players. This is your the drum for you. Okay? Again, not an everyday drum. The everyday drums would be um, the Clevelander and those first two pearls that I played. For me, those are the drums I would use the most, all right? But this is sure is pretty drum. This is Bubinga. Okay, next we have this cute little thing. This is called a pancake drum. It's also made by Pearl. Uh, people use this to do auditions. And the reason is because it's really small and it sounds small. So you can play loud on it and you sound soft. So, uh, especially when you're behind a screen in an audition, in other words, the um, committee can't tell who you are, this is a useful drum for that. It's not that useful for anything else because it kind of uh, gives up at a loud volume. It's probably as loud as you can ever play it. But playing soft, So it's a very quiet drum. So useful for that. All right. It's pretty neat looking too. So it's got a raised snare mechanism. All right. And it uses these kind of uh, guitar wire snares. So that's a pancake drum. 
Now, this next drum I really, really like. It is a pearl aluminum snare drum. And it's one of my favorite drums. Let me open this basket up a little. This is a deeper drum. It's a six and a half by 14. And it's got a ton of power, this drum. Um, a little bit of muffling on it. Some of you might ask, what is this thing right here? That's for when I'm playing, and before I play something soft, I can relax my hands, rest my sticks there, and they just come over. So, rather than just put them on the rim, which would make noise, okay? So yeah, this is a great drum. It also sounds really good with the snares off. There's some snares down here ringing. Fix that. And it's also good for soft playing. Good all-round drum. Sounds good at all dynamics. It's got a lot of attack. All right, aluminum is a very good um, material for for drums. Now this is not like an, a Ludwig Acrylite, which is also aluminum. That's thin aluminum, but this is um, heavy cast aluminum. So they also make uh, several different sizes of this drum, but this one's my favorite. I own a few of these, and I really like them. So this would be a good choice for an all-round drum, and also they're not expensive. I think it's one of the cheapest drums in the Pearl line. Okay, um, one more drum, and then we'll call it a day. So, uh, a field drum is a drum that, uh, I'm gonna open this up, that is deeper and sometimes bigger even, 15, 16 inches, than a regular drum. Sort of kind of the old rope drum sound, if you ever watched the, uh, the war movies, the old Civil War, or even Revolutionary War movies. You see those drums, those are rope drums. That's the sound we're after here. So gut snares, like this. These are fake gut snares, but. And it's basically kind of a wet sound. All right, this one's muffled pretty good. If you ever watch any movies like The Patriot or those movies, that's the sound you're hearing, like a field drum sound. Now again, this is a small uh, field drum, all right? Uh, but, you know, they make them, they're really big. I have a few. All right? they're, uh, you have to put them on special stamps because they're so deep that, you know, they're at least 16 inches deep, usually much more. So um, this drum here is about 10 inches deep. Okay, so. And it rings pretty good. You got to kind of muffle it down very, very much. Also, it kind of sucks you in. This is one case where you might want to use a heavier stick. Well, I put these here to show you, if you listen. Okay, so a heavier stick gets more depth out of the drum. So that should do it for today. Thanks so much for watching, and hopefully... Um, now you know the difference between um, calf heads and plastic heads and the different effects that shells and the heads have on a snare drum. So I'll see you later.